filming? Yeah, let's go. It's let's go. The, um, okay. You want me to hold the mic or you? Hold no. The mic? Yeah, yeah. Either way. You would like to hold. Sure. There we go. We're just reminiscing. Yeah. You're playing running with the devil. Yeah. The stain causes a, a purportedly brain. running with the devil. Okay. I think that's what it was. <laughs> I did get to tell Michael Anthony, thank you for the bass line because it yeah. it helped it helped put a pretty cool band together, <laughs> which was nice. Uh, I think it was. I was just you know my friend Greg and I we were waking up just practicing. We were downstairs, lived downstairs from where Dave lived, and he he lived with uh, he had a roommate Tracy, um, and is either Dave or she through the flower pot down on us, one of the two, and with a loud scream. Wow. Yeah, shut the fuck up. And, and you met after that. You hadn't met yet. We hadn't met after that. You know, my, uh, it's funny, my friend Greg, I have a new memoir coming out, More Life with Death, and my friend Greg, I had him uh, give some really cool stories in the book, and he really remembered this story. Great. I'm, and, and He was in the room? He was in the room because he and I were best friends growing up in Minnesota. We moved out to California. We were the roommates downstairs. Yeah, we were downstairs, and uh, Dave and Tracy lived upstairs. And our friends, uh, it was 1736 North Sycamore, which is between just north of Hollywood Boulevard, south of Franklin. Okay. So between Hollywood and Franklin. Now, is that east or west of Highland? That's... Uh, west. It's west. Yep, almost to La Brea. Oh my the next God. big street is La Brea. So you're, you're right in the heart of where is now the Oscars. And yes. All that and at that time, people just like me, kids from the Midwest, were all moving there to go to Musicians Institute. Yeah. So, like, cool. that whole street was all students, so all you heard all day long was, like, the flash dance solo and, and Eddie Van Halen riffs. And, and I remember the <laughs> Steve Lukather... Yeah, Steve Luke. What was it? the uh, the tubes, uh, oh, the backward? Co- yeah, talk to you later. Yeah, yeah. And all those le- like oh, that. The other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, a great, great era of of great guitar playing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and even on the radio, uh, like oh, I remember Steve Lynch from Autograph. He actually taught. I think he was uh, is an instructor over at, at GIT. Yeah, of course they had their big hit. Uh, turn, turn up the radio. Yeah. Yep. So that yeah, cool, cool period of time you know i was just reminiscing with john bush i mean what an amazing time record stores everywhere yeah records yeah music plus and licorice pizza and you'd walk down and look at the new kerrang or the yep. you know all the british magazines coming in and what was the movie that tom cruise was in um they re and juliana huff is it is that her name she was the lead in it and it was a musical movie and they actually reenacted oh. remember they had tower records they actually restored oh. it yeah I, yeah, I didn't like that one. Yeah, yeah it was a musical, Rock of Ages, Rock or of Ages. yeah, right. So yeah, exactly, exactly. But it just made me Somebody think. Somebody gave me the DVD. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, I'm not. Made me think of Tower it. Records because they re basically kind of recreated that. Because I remember we did a an in store there uh, when we what yeah on when, on when we released Euthanasia in uh, Halloween 1994. We did a midnight, uh, did a, 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 it no, just a record signing. Okay. But those signings, I mean, there'd be literally 2,000 people right. lined up down the block, yeah, okay, you know. Speak. And that continued really through the 90s, I remember, because then we switched over, like, on cryptic writings and stuff. Then they were all at, like, Best Buy, you know, yeah. the corporate in-stores, right. you know. They had less refrigerators and microwaves and more CDs. Yeah. That's yeah. now changed. <laughs> it's, it's kind of better when you're surrounded by vinyl and T-shirts. Yeah, you know? yeah. The last in-store I ever went to at the Tower Records was Hugh Hefner. They had Playboy After Dark DVD set. Wow. And it was Hugh and the yeah. girls next door. I yeah. Was like, well, the DVDs. That was the one. Yeah, exactly. Go out with a bang with an in-store. <laughs> the rad in-store on your DVD. <laughs> but uh, yeah, In that's. Yeah, we off into the yeah exactly. Well, and you know, it's funny because now they have stereos there. You know, I remember going in, uh, the one by me in Scottsdale, uh, a fan, a guy that ran like, the high-end uh, audio department is, is a Megadeth fan, so he wanted to get a copy of, I think, Dystopia to have, because he took me back to listen to some, some turntables and stuff, and, and, um, and he had, I think, the Adele record. And I said, you need a Megadeth record. He goes, dude, bring one in, and I'll plow. I'll keep it in my stash. And I'm like, well, you work at Best Buy. You should have them here. <laughs> you know, but but it's interesting how the hi-fi thing with audio, uh, with especially with vinyl, because there's total audio files that are into that, which is 
which is great. I don't I don't have a room like that in my house yeah. where I just listen so to music. Yeah, yeah. Well, and vinyl now is about what kind of stereo and you go for sure, big time. The big Marantz and towers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now that was a cool a cool thing. I mean, and now. You know, um, I buy vinyl just so I can have the album covers, you know, because, yeah, it's so cool to open it up. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll even buy used ones, like, you know, old used or just to have the cover of it. It's cool. Six ninety nine. You go to Amoeba, they got the 99 cent vinyl section. Totally, exactly. Scratched up, whatever, but I just want to, I want to read the credits like it was back in the day, you know. Yeah. And you hope when you pull the jacket out, it had some more writing and yes. photos. Yes, but when you ordered them from the Columbia House Record Club, when yeah. you got 13 for one penny, yeah. and then everyone after that cost like $20, right. <laughs> the, those never had any <laughs> writing. It was like that was like the second or third right. pressing. They did like yeah, the, the cheap the pressing. Yeah, the right. lowest cheap pressing that they you would do. The vinyl, but none of the extras. Yes, exactly. Yeah. What a great time. Now, I know you couldn't be more busy. With the label, the base store, mm -hmm. the management, and everything. Of course, we had Tom on our, yep. you know, Nam session. Yeah. So you could phone in on. Yeah. But you know, the new book. What? Where's that going to take us? So it started around. We were doing a, a coffee tour back in the Midwest at some record shops. Ironically, mm -hmm. some vinyl and you know cassette record and CD record shops around the uh, South Dakota, Minnesota area. Yeah. And uh, where I picked up a bunch of old vinyl, by the way, okay. just because of the album covers. <laughs> and um, as we, I stopped at the house to uh, the farm where I grew up, um, and my nephew lives there now, and, I, and he had a copy of our Ellison family history from the 1600s to 1979, which I've now updated because uh, I'm kind of into that, doing that, keeping it updated. So that's what prompted the whole idea of the book was... Everything as far back as the origin of the Ellisons from Norway. Where'd you come from? Yep, moving to Minnesota, and then kind of this return back to my roots of now the coffee company, the record label. So what was an interesting thing is you start writing these books. You know, you kind of like writing a song. You just start to start putting stuff out there. Then you kind of start to find the flavor, and you find your you find the story, and then you kind of find your voice is sort of the process of it and the story that developed was of course the new things the label emp label group gulfs and coffee um metal allegiance you know things since i've been back in megadeth since 2010 because that was kind of where the last book ended i think i i think i had to stop writing that by about 2011 to get it out on the on the to market so this one picks up you know certainly from then until now but what i thought was interesting the combat records uh chapter or they're just there that that discussion in the book suddenly took me back to the earliest days of megadeth which hence the story on 1736 yeah. north sycamore so, yeah so so what happened is this book encapsulates with really great detail and a lot of other people who came in and 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 told stories around it of the earliest days of Megadeth, which is largely undocumented and is kind of fitting that it would come out now with the Murder in the Front Row movie coming out, right? And with everything that's happening now around the Bay Area thrash scene, yeah. that my book would really focus in on those early years of Megadeth, the founding, signing to Combat Records, mm -hmm. and the things that transitioned pretty much up through So Far So Good So What. And that's kind of where I stop uh, as far as the, the Megadeth portion. But it's cool because um, there's a book that I really like to, you know, I read most, a lot of these memoirs and, I, and the, the Kiss ones, of course, I read all those, most of those. Um, and the ones that I like are the ones that are, I like Paul's, his was great. Um, and I read, uh, there's a few of the other Kiss books, and the one Kiss book I liked was Nothing to Lose, which focused on the early, the founding of Kiss up through pretty much up to Kiss Alive, like kind of through the first three albums. Right. Um, and so I, I took that concept and applied that with More Life uh, With Death to go back into like those first three records of Megadeth, yeah. kind of right, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I kind of borrowed that idea and got people who were there to talk about uh, my friend Greg Handovit, Jay Reynolds, who was uh, in Megadeth for a season, just a brief moment before he 
uh, before so you know while we were doing so far so good so what but he never recorded with us but it was a friend yeah. um, Brian Slagle uh, and then I also got some other people like KK Downing um, Dan Donigan from Disturbed, who happened to see us on the So Far So Good So What tour at the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago yeah. as he was coming up the ranks. And it's just fun to hear these stories from these guys that were in the audience. Yeah. You know, they're now big rock stars themselves, but they, you know, Mark Tremonti yeah. uh, tells some funny stories and just, you know, just cool stuff. So it's, uh, um, you know, I've realized that period in there uh, is a really kind of peace cells into So Far So Good So What was a real formative uh, era for a lot of today's younger like rock star guitar players and musicians Th that was the era of megadeth that inspired them yeah what's the blueprint you know like yep. we always say about the 70s so much of those great bands and records people still try and go after today that yep. that sound that attitude that brilliance yep. you know yep. and of course you're so close to it when you're doing it you, you have no idea what you're doing but yep. you look back on it like that's what made you know, the history that you can put out. What's yep. the next record? How many is it? What is the next record? The number? That'll be number 16. 16th Yep, record, yep. You know. Yep. And uh, the recording industry changes, the business changes. But, yep. You know, you still got to draw on some of those roots that people want. Yeah, I mean, I think with Dystopia, we, f we reframed that. You know, it took a long time to kind of get the big ocean liner sort of swung around, you know. But, I mean, look, part of it is, you know, you can't, try to be current and you can't you certainly can't chase what's going on you kind of just become current by just doing what you do you know um, sometimes you write a song and you never know where it's going to end up I mean there's this new Apple iPhone commercial that just came out today that has last rights love to death on it from killing is my business like the very first song when you needle drop a mega death record ever okay. of this of the 15 albums we have out the first song of that one is the in the is the iPhone yeah. commercial. <laughs> yeah. So, who knew? I mean, we certainly didn't write that going. Hey, maybe one day we can get this in an iPhone commercial. I mean, iPhones didn't even exist. You know, Apple was barely even a company. Well, I so these people today that we're breaking all these bands and we said it at mm -hmm. the jam session with no cell phones, no internet, no social yep. media, no computer. Yep. And speaking of which, I think I have to go to a VIP meet and greet. Is that right? Yes. I'm called off by the boss yeah. man. So anyway, and, yeah. And again, in closing, yep. I know our fellow friend Ron Keel, I want to remind you. I yes, of course. He's the original manager. Yep. I was the manager yep. of yep. yep. So, so which is a Yep, yep, yep. Which is awesome because, and I'll, I'll close on this because when I first moved, again, to L.A., yep. Uh, me and Greg Handovit, and I think Dave, we went to the country club to see Steeler because Ingve had just joined the band. And I remember sitting on, on there, we had a friend of ours, uh, Ed, who, uh, Ed Whittle, I think was his name, his last name, and he went to um, GIT, and he'd come over to our apartment, and we'd sit around and we'd play like Sales of Sharon and the, some of this early Uli Roth stuff. We'd sit and jam that. That was very instrumental in the earliest Megadeth stuff that we wrote. And I remember hearing a cassette tape that Mike Varney had sitting there just kind of bullshitting with Ingbe. And you could tell he's like smoking a cigarette and then shredding and playing. And then all of a sudden he was in Steeler. So we were there, dude. <laughs> awesome. <Love it. laughs> See ya. So much, Dave. Give it to you. Bye. Great time. Bye. Double allegiance.